Welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're checking out something super fun. This is the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Alloy. We're going to go into some of the features and designs of this entry level version of the Specialized Stump Jumper. We'll talk about the revisions for 2021 of this brand new frame. And then of course we'll talk about the geometry, what kind of trails this would be on, and then the components of the bike. Finally, we'll find out exactly what it weighs. So if all these things are interesting to you, I hope you stick around, sit back, let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy videos like this. So checking out the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper, this frame has been totally redesigned for 2021, which is actually quite impressive because back in 2019, Specialized rethought their Stump Jumper lineup and came to this new sidearm design for the rear suspension and modern geometry. And in just two years time, they've gone ahead and modernized the bike yet again. And to me, that's something I'm pretty psyched to see with Specialized because their bikes ride really well and it's great to see them keeping up with the time. Now this bike is made out of what they call their M5 butted aluminum. And that M5 butted aluminum frame has nice smoothed out welds. It's got internal cable routing. It's got the sidearm design for that rear suspension. And then the cables are totally internal all the way to the back of the bike. And what that makes for is a really clean look, protected cables, and just a gorgeous bike in my opinion. Now this version of the Stump Jumper represents their most entry level version of the bike. Now don't get me wrong, this is definitely a mid-level or better bike from the grand scheme of things, but this is going to be a value component spec to get a really nice frame. The sizing of this stump jumper is something that's going to be pretty unique for this lineup. So this is set up in an S4 frame size, what we're looking at, and the S4 doesn't directly correlate to say a size large in another brand. What Specialized is doing is using their rider first technology that they started in the road bike series to make six frame sizes of the bike that have their own manipulated tubing, own shaping, to make sure that from the smallest to the biggest bike, they all ride the way that they should. The other thing is that S size number doesn't correlate just to your height, but rather other fit factors and your riding style as well. So this bike is an S4, but they come all the way from an S1 to an S6 in size versus the 2020 version, previous generation, came in a small to an extra large. So this has two more sizes than the previous generation, allowing you to dial in your fit quite a bit better. And then it's also gonna have totally modernized frame geometry. Starting with the head tube of the bike, so running a 140 millimeter fork up front, this is gonna have a 65 degree head tube angle in the low position and a 65 and a half degree head tube angle in a high position. The seat tube is pretty steep, but 77.7 degrees in high and 77.2 in low. And then you'll have a snappy chain stay length of 440 millimeters. And that's wrapping it all together to give a pretty wide range of trails. Now, how they can do that is where the shock mounts to the clevis, there's gonna be a flip chip that allows for a five degree angle adjustment in the higher low position. And with a 65 and a half degree head tube angle in the high position, this bike is gonna be super stable, but also be able to take some good downhill sections. And if you were to take it to a bike park or a long flowy downhill trail, you can drop it in low and make it a 65 degree for that much more stability. The seat tube angle being steeper, that is allowing a good pedaling position when you're climbing on the bike. So you're not giving up too much for that front end. The other thing to talk about is the reach of the bikes have definitely grown compared to the previous generation. So this being an S4, the reach is 480 millimeters. So that's a pretty long ways to the front of the bike, making the front center of this bike quite a bit longer. And you can see that just by looking at it. Where that changes on the trail is that means this bike is gonna be a bit easier to manual. It's gonna be a lot more stable downhill. You're gonna have room to shift your body around during climbing and rocky sections. 
and it should give some confidence out on the trail. And adding to that confidence, it's gonna be the rear suspension design. So this for 2021 keeps FSR. So FSR is specialized own suspension geometry, which uses a horse link, which is right back there. And that link helps divorce the pedaling and the braking from the suspension. So basically here, you're gonna have good bump compliance even under load. You'll have limited brake jack, nice leverage curve going to that rear X-Fusion shock. And this suspension is sort of interesting because on the carbon versions of these 2021s, they revised the carbon one instead of using a horse link to have a flex stay. Now with aluminum, you can't rely on the frame flexing. So instead they've got the pivots on the bike. And while we're looking at the back, there's two other things to note. The first is gonna be these ridges on the chain stay protector. What those little bumps and ridges do is while the chain is going down the trail and hitting that, basically it's making these sharp points that it would hit rather than a flat section so that you don't get anywhere near as much chain slap noise. The other neat thing is, is the chain stays have the cable routing go internal. So I talked about that for the whole frame. You've got these internal cable routing, but it happens in the back as well. And it comes from the seat tube into the chain stay making a really clean exit to the back for both the rear derailleur and the hydraulic disc brakes. Now, the drivetrain of the bike is gonna be SRAM's SX drivetrain. This is an Eagle drivetrain, meaning it's running an 11 to 50 tooth cassette in back. So nice, super wide range. And it's gonna draw forward to an SX power spline crank set, which is running through a threaded 73 millimeter bottom bracket. Bottom bracket also has ISCG mounts on it. So these little mounts that you can see there, and that's gonna allow you to run chain guide, bash guard, whatever you might want on the back end of the bike. Now to control the suspension, you've got the X-Fusion O2 Pro RL. This is 190 millimeter by 42.5 rear shock. It's mounting to the clevis and to the frame and standard eyelets. So this is just a metric shock that you can change out with anything else as you upgrade the bike. And up front, the 140 millimeters up front is being controlled by this RockShock 35 Silver. So the RockShock 35 Silver uses a turnkey lockout damper. So you're gonna have open progressive notches as we go down all the way to locked out. On the same side of the fork, you'll have a rebound adjust so you can speed it up and slow it down. It is boost through axle up front, so 15 by 110. You've got these diffusion black stanchions that are 35 millimeters in width. And then it's air adjustable underneath this cap so that you can set it up for your weight and your riding style. The cockpit is set up with this specialized handlebar. So this handlebar has an eight degree back sweep. It's got a six degree up sweep, 30 millimeters of rise and 800 millimeters wide. The stem on the bike is gonna be an alloy specialized stem. And then moving to the back, you've got the body geometry bridge saddle. This saddle is actually pretty comfortable. I like how these feel. And it's mounted up on an X-Fusion dropper post with a 34.9 millimeter diameter. That's larger than what you would often get. The most common were 30.9 and 31.6, but these modern bikes where you're getting a bit more beef for more control are running these larger seat tube diameters so that you get less toggle in the dropper post, which is nice for fit and comfort and just durability. Now that dropper post is gonna have quite a long way to go. So you've got this thumb lever here, which is gonna allow you to press on that. And just like a one by lever on the other side, it's gonna operate the seat post. So this being a size S4 is gonna have 170 millimeters of travel. The S1 is 100, the S2 is 125, S3 at 150, S4 and 5 are 170, and S6, you get a 200 millimeter travel dropper seat post, which that's just crazy. But they're able to do that because with the revised suspension design, you can see that the top tube comes down. They've got plenty of room for a tall dropper post. To round out the bike, you're gonna have 
these Roval 29 rims. These are 30 millimeter internal width tubeless ready rims. They're eyeleted, they have 28 spokes, and they're laced up to some sealed bearing Roval hubs. Slowing the bike down is gonna be the Tektro Gemini Comp brakes. These are hydraulic disc brakes. They've got a nice mineral oil hydraulic lever on the handlebar. That position is gonna feel really nice, give tons of control. And then to shift the SX drivetrain, you've got a thumb and a thumb button to go from easier to harder gear. So overall, you can see the spec on this bike is pretty impressive for an entry level full suspension alloy bike. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's go ahead and find out exactly what this bike weighs. The actual weight of the Stump Jumper alloy comes in at 35.76 pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Alloy. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this Stump Jumper from Specialized. Let me know what you think of the revisions for 2021 and the component spec on the bike as well. While you're at it, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to click subscribe. That way you can see more videos like this in the future.